So apparently Google has built their own agent payment protocols that allows agents to make payments for us. Because right now the biggest problem with um, agents basically doing our shopping for us is that you don't really want to give an agent your credit card information, right? Because then it can just go rogue and going rogue essentially means spending all your money. My name is Holt Skinner. I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud AI. And today we'll be talking about the agent payments protocol or AP2 from Google. AI agents are changing how we interact with the digital world. They're quickly moving beyond simple conversations to become actors that can understand complex requests and perform multi-step tasks on our behalf. But there's a big problem. Our entire global payments infrastructure was built for humans, not autonomous AI agents. Today's payment systems assume a human is directly clicking buy. When an autonomous agent initiates a payment, it breaks this assumption and raises some questions. How can we prove that a user gave an agent specific authority to make a particular purchase? I haven't actually tried any of these agents. I was trying to think of examples where I've tried it and came run up, came across this problem. I thought of using the ChatGPT agent to do my shopping, but I don't really love the web browser that they basically give you when they want you to take over. It's, it just doesn't feel right. It's a bad user experience on my end. This is why Google is introducing the agent payments protocol. The central innovation here is how these roles communicate. Instead of simple API calls, AP2 uses verifiable credentials, or VCs. Think of them as the tamper-proof, cryptographically signed data payloads your agents will create in exchange. There are three primary types. For human presence scenarios, where the user is available to approve the purchase directly, we use a cart mandate. It captures the user's final explicit authorization for a specific cart with products, price, and shipping info. Their approval cryptographically signs that mandate, creating deterministic, non-repeatable proof of authorization. Human not present scenarios will be supported in a future version of the protocol. These are like, buy these tickets when they go on sale at midnight. For these, the user signs an intent mandate. It captures the conditions where an agent is authorized to buy something in the user's absence. These are things like a price limit or a product category. There's also the payment mandate. This is, a this is a hard one, right? Because I feel like this still leaves the AI or the agent to make the final decision. And I guess, how do they ensure that the intent, the agent is actually going to follow the intent and not do something else that it thinks it's better? Like, for example, you, it buys another ticket. It's like, oh, I couldn't find a Taylor Swift ticket, but I bought the ticket of this other singer because she's similar to Taylor Swift. How do they make sure that the intent is the same there? It feels like that's going to be really hard to do. Potential for the payment network and banks to get visibility into the transaction. It signals that an AI agent was involved and whether it's a human present or human not present transaction. Let's walk through a sample human present flow. Well, this is user asks a shopping agent to buy a product. So it's transferred to agent, transfer to agent. I can help with that. Do you have a preferred merchant? Also, would you like the item to be refundable and do you require, I guess this is you basically making the intent. The oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So intent created. Please confirm the following details of your purchase. Note that this information will be shared with the merchant. So item description, user confirmation required. Yes. So it's almost doing a filter that you would basically use on that website. But then again, I feel like this still leaves it up to the person that is implementing, to the merchant that is implementing this because they could choose to ignore this filter, meaning that your agent can then, will then accidentally buy something from them, right? Cryptographically signs the cart first. This is a guarantee that they will fulfill that exact order at that price. The shopping agent presents the merchant signed cart and payment options from the credentials provider to the user. Would you prefer to use a digital wallet to access your credential for this purchase? Which digital wallet would you like to use? PayPal? Once the user approves the transaction, their device signs both the cart man. See, all this just feels so long. Like, I feel like all this back and forth, you could have just, I could have just bought that thing myself, right? Man. Like, you know, what's it called? The Apple feature that just auto fills your card details, or if you use one password. I feel like that's way faster than doing all of this. Um, so I think a better approach is actually that th these merchants that you use just have an agent on them that basically adds whatever needs to be added to your cart and then you just buy it there. It just feels, this feels, the user experience is still not perfect in my opinion. Finally, the transaction is executed and the user just has to wait a few business days to get their item. This creates a clear paper trail. The merchant has proof on what the user approved, which is essential for assigning accountability in any disputes. However, this protocol enables much more than just simple purchases. Imagine a user wants a jacket in a color that's out of stock. With an intent mandate, they could tell the agent, I really want this in green. The merchant's agent receives this intent. It could check for returns, place a special order, and respond with a new offer. If the user accepts, a sale is made that otherwise would have been lost. So this is the power of turning transactions into secure, audible, contractual conversations. A protocol is only as useful as its adoption, so we need your feedback, expertise, and contributions. This is pretty cool. I feel like there's actually a lot of companies that can be built on the back of this.